Hello my freaky darlings. Welcome back. This week I'm looking into the incident at Dyatlov Pass. This is definitely one of those what the fuck happened kind of cases. And I have to admit it's definitely a head scratcher. So, nine Russian skiers, mostly students and graduates from the Ural Polytechnic Institute, set out from Yekaterinburg, then known as Fedlovsk, in January 1959. The plan was to ski about 200 miles, or about 322 k's, over 16 days, summiting several peaks along the way and allowing enough time to be back for the spring semester. The group skied out of an abandoned village on the 28th of January 1959 and made it to a campsite on the 1st of February. They never left the campsite alive. A search operation was launched on the 20th of February. The student's tent, which had been sliced open, apparently from the inside, was discovered on a mountain called Kolatsyakol. However the fuck you pronounce it. Now, it means dead mountain in the indigenous Manzi language. Now, that should probably have been their first clue not to go on that fucking mountain. But anyway. Their belongings were still inside the tent. Investigators found footprints in the snow of eight or nine people who were wearing socks, a single shoe, or were barefoot. The footsteps led towards a dense forest, but disappeared after 500 meters. The following day, the bodies of Yuri Doroshenko and Yuri Krivonishenko were found about one and a half k's away lying by a campfire. They were both stripped to their underwear. The next three bodies, that of expedition leader Igor Dayatlov and another man and a woman, were found between the fire and the tent. Now, maybe they were trying to get back to the tent? Autopsies failed to find any evidence of foul play. An inquest concluded that all five had died of hypothermia. But two months later, the partially dressed bodies of the other four members of the team were discovered in a forest ravine, not far from where the first two bodies were found. They appear to have suffered traumatic pressure or crush injuries, and the tongue of one of them had been ripped out. Apparently it was the woman. Otherwise, there were no external injuries, but test, tests conducted on their bodies and clothing showed small traces of radiation. The investigation concluded, and I should you not, that the skiers died because they encountered a natural force they were unable to overcome. Like, seriously? Anyway, public access to the site was banned for three years, and the results of the investigation were classified. Now, needless to say, this all begs a few questions that have to this day never been answered and have sparked a fuck ton of conspiracy theories. So, why the fuck did the skiers flee the relative safety of the tent? And why did they leave their belongings, including warm clothes behind? Why did some of them freeze to death, while others showed signs of internal trauma? Who or what removed the tongue of one of the victims? Why were there traces of radiation on their clothes? It's like, seriously, what the fuck happened? Now, I kind of understand why there are so many batshit fucking crazy theories. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's, an, it's a weird one. It was also reported that eyewitnesses in the northern Urals saw fast moving fi- balls of fire in the night sky around the time of the Dyatlov Pass incident. It has been suggested, plausibly, that these were Soviet missile or rocket tests. But another theory, and here we encounter the earliest paranormal explanation of the incident, holds that the fireballs exploded or emitted a beam of unspecified energy 
that directly caused the skier's death. Um, yeah. Anyway, now that theory was also proposed 31 years after the fact. And oddly enough, by one of the original investigators in the case, a former public prosecutor named Lev Ivanov. But Ivanov's fireball theory presupposes that the reported sightings might match up with the actual date of the incident, the 2nd of February. An assumption that has been challenged by another author, Russian mountaineer Yevgeny Boyanov, who says he found no verifiable reports of unidentified flying objects in the Urals on those dates. But even though his 1990 article came out, the principal explanation for the Dyatlov deaths focused on straightforward natural causes such as avalanche or animal attack. An attack by an actual human, though not impossible, was ruled out by investigators due to lack of evidence. Another possibility was secret government activity. Now, please note, this is Russia. So, you know, it could have been a military or KGB operation the skiers unknowingly stumbled onto. Despite the declassification and release of the case files in the intervening years, the contents of which were eventually published online, the original documents did little to resolve lingering questions and only seemed to prompt further crazy fucked up speculation. The weirdest hypothesis to date was that proposed in a June 2014 Discovery Channel documentary called Russian Yeti, The Killer Loves. The following is from a press release announcing the show's first airing. On February 2nd, 1959, nine college students hiked up the icy slopes of the Ural Mountains in the heart of Russia, but never made it out alive. Investigators have never been able to give a definitive answer behind who or what caused the bizarre crime scene. 55 years later, American explorer Mike Hebecki reinvestigates the mystery known as the Dyatlov Pass incident. But what he uncovers is truly horrifying. Following the trail of evidence, Mike finds proof that the hikers were not alone. A photograph taken by one of the hikers a day before they died suggests that they encountered a Yeti. Yep, I'm not fucking kidding. According to the Discovery Channel, the Dyatlov group, group met their deaths at the hands of a fucking Yeti. Yeah. Now, I've previously gone into my thoughts on Yeti, so you can always go watch that if you like. But what gets me is the fact that the host of a Discovery program used the Dyatlov Pass incident as proof that Yetis are real. Now, when I found out one of the students was missing a tongue, immediately I knew this was not caused by an avalanche, Lubicki said. Something ripped out the tongue of this woman. Now, I kind of agree with Lubicki there, but that he just concludes that it was a Yeti like, seriously? Now, as further evidence, he presented an alleged photo of the Yeti snapped by a member of the Dyatlov expedition. But as per fucking usual, the picture is blurry and pretty much just looks like some dude that's out of focus. Also, the fact that her tongue could have been devoured by a scavenging animal or any other myriad of natural explanations was completely ignored. Now, it wasn't just the tongue that was missing. According to the Dyatlov autopsy reports, there was also some soft tissue around the woman's eyes, eyebrows, nose bridge, upper lip, and cheekbone, not to mention the eyes themselves that were all gone. Which also makes it more likely that some hungry critter got hold of the poor woman's face. 
but Lebicki just completely ignored all of that and went straight to the hole. The Yeti did it. it, it anyway. Now, in February 2019, Russian authorities did reopen the investigation into the incident. Although only three possible explanations were considered. An avalanche, a snow slab avalanche, whatever the fuck that is, or a hurricane. The possibility of a crime has been discounted. The avalanche theory is certainly far more plausible than the Yeti killer idea. Now, there hasn't been any further movement on the investigation. I guess COVID put a bit of a freeze on that one. Yeah. So, what do you think happened? Anyway, that's it for this week. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're interested in things that go bump in the night, conspiracy theories, urban legends, or other weird shit, please hit that subscribe button or the follow button, depending on which platform you're viewing this on. And if you've read any of my books and enjoyed them, be a freaky darling and please leave a review wherever you bought it. Pretty please. I'm asking you so nicely. How can you say no? Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay off the fucking mountains, especially if it's called Dead Mountain. You know, just don't go there. <laughs>